Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. The title of this episode is How to Break from Fear and Limitation to Become Your Genuine Self. In this episode, we are speaking with Bianca Thomas, who is the co-founder, CFO, and COO of Evolve Ventures Technology and the host of the Evolve Ventures podcast, which is a global podcast with a reach in over 50 countries. She is the cognitive behavioral therapist and success coach who helps people break the patterns and beliefs holding them back from being happy, loving themselves, being successful, and reaching their fullest potential. Bianca, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. This is what we're about at Not Your Mama's Podcast, how to reach our fullest potential to be better than what we were yesterday. So before we dive into into today's topic, can you give a little bit more about your background and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So I don't have this like miraculous story, you know, like you, you'll hear people go on podcasts and it's like, it's like, it's unbelievable the things that they went through. I don't have a crazy story like that. I'm a girl who grew up in a old school Middle Eastern family who just never felt good enough. I didn't feel loved, didn't feel cared for typical middle child who like thought everyone hated me and loved my older brother. And because of that, as a kid, I actually developed a lot of mental health issues and a lot of um, mental health challenges that my parents didn't really know how to deal with. So I was suicidal at a very young age. You know, the school actually had to get involved and like call my parents when I made a comment to a teacher. Um, I was like self-harming. I They used to take me to the doctor all the time because I was bald from ripping my hair out and nobody knew why. So I, I just had a lot of mental health issues and no one knew how to talk about it. You know, yeah. going, being in a Middle Eastern family, like they didn't know how to get into that stuff. And so because of that and because of not feeling loved, because of not feeling good enough, when I became a teenager and going through school, I was bullied a lot. And so when I became a teenager, I did what most people do to try to get a sense of self-love and a sense of worth. I dated the first person that gave me attention. Yeah. First person to ever be there. First person to ever show any interest in me. We dated. He told me six days after he met me that he was in love with me and wanted to marry me. And that should have been a red flag, but no, I didn't notice it. And Unfortunately, the relationship did end up becoming abusive. You know, I was sexually, emotionally, and mentally abused for four years until I was able to get out of it. Um, and then after that, it was just, I was a broken person, like mm -hmm. beyond belief, no sense of self-worth, no sense of who I am, what my purpose is in the world. And I started realizing, oh my God, I think I'm bisexual. Mm -hmm. So add that on top of everything else. I was just yeah. in a really dark time in my life for a few years, kind of following that pattern again of trying to get other people to love me because I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so luckily I was a really athletic kid. And so the gym became like a huge part of my life. And I actually met one of my mentors there. So he introduced himself. We became really good friends. And he's the person who actually introduced me to personal development and mental health awareness and all of these things. And I was actually getting my bachelor's in psychology at the time, which like didn't do anything for me, but talking to this person did. Yeah. So I get introduced to personal development. I get introduced to all of these topics. And it was one of the first times in my life that I had ever felt genuine, unconditional love. Mm. And so from becoming really close with him, becoming really close with his business partner, um, I just, I started changing and I started growing. And it was at that point, you know, I met my business partner because we both did Muay Thai together. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's uh, it's like MMA. It's like a fighting Yeah, that's sport. what I thought. Yeah. It's like a jujitsu, yeah. like a type of that. Yeah. Thing, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So the running joke that she and I have is that she punched me in the face and we became best friends and we like fell in love after that because that's really what happened. I was one of the only girls that like could take a punch basically. So we became insanely close and 
started our podcast during the pandemic and started our business, like right when the pandemic had started. So we're growing our business. I'm coaching. She's coaching. We're doing all of these incredible things, but I still had this sense of like, I'm not good enough. I'm not supposed to be doing this. I don't know how I fit into all of this. Like, I don't, I didn't really, I still didn't know who I was. So following the pattern again, I start and I meet someone else. It's a girl this time. So we meet, we're talking, whatever. My parents find out. Mm -hmm. So super Middle Eastern doesn't end up going well. I end up having to leave home and I move in with this person after a month because Mm -hmm. I, I had nowhere else to go and it was the middle of the pandemic. So a lot of places weren't really accepting like applications for places. So we move in. The relationship is absolutely terrible, right? Horrible. We're not meant for each other. I almost lose my business. My business partner is getting sick of me because I'm changing and I'm developing into this person that like everything just starts going haywire. And after a year, I was just finally able to like see everything that was going on, get out of it, and then started making like all of the amazing changes that I've made in my life now to where... I have my master's degree. I'm working as a clinician now. Um, Our business is like booming. We have uh, clients all over the world and it's just, it's going incredible. So awesome. Well, first and foremost, I want to say you do have an incredible story because, (laughs) (laughs) and don't limit and don't say that you don't, you know, because it's hard to find that self-worth. And, you know, especially when you feel like the black sheep of the family and things like yeah. that. Like me- your mental state is life's a mental game and it's really hard to play it. So battling with, with your um, lack of fulfillment and all of that stuff is a genuine story. And it's mm-hmm. something that we all go through and it's so relatable. I mean, even for me, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like, who am I? Who is Christina? Like, what is my purpose? Where do I fit in the world? And so it's a great reminder that everyone really does struggle. And, um, even like our parents and stuff and like what their expectations are of us. I think we can all have that. Like you have to go to school and do this. And coming from a middle Eastern family, I'm sure it's a lot more strict and like their values and, and all that stuff. So going kind of more into the topic that we want to talk about, you know, how can we help people discover and target ways to break those negative self-beliefs? Like what did you do that helped you carry you through that stuck point in your life? I think one of the biggest things that helped me right off the bat, the very first thing was meeting that mentor of mine. Mm -hmm. So many of us, we don't really realize the impact that the people around us are having. You know, we think we can outgrow our environment. We think that we're, you know, we're the one and it doesn't matter who's around us. You know, if I'm persistent enough, if I'm, you know, diligent enough, I can figure it out. And unfortunately, you know, it's, it's not the case. You can only grow to the level of your environment. So the first thing that was really that for me was I was finally introduced to people who showed me what it actually meant to be loved and to be cared for and to have it unconditionally. Mm -hmm. You know, like I see you as you are and you're enough. And when that was the case and when that was there, I finally felt safe enough to be able to look at those parts of me that I had been running away from or that I had been you know, hiding in the self-harm or that I had been hiding by trying to get all of these people to love me and to pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. So, so in being able to be around those really good people, it was the first time I was actually able to see, wow, I've actually run this pattern over and over and over again. And I was finally able to have, you know, help to start recognizing them and breaking them. And, you know, eventually after that last relationship ended, like really doing that deep inner work Mm -hmm. that I had been neglecting for myself. 
Like I was always listening to personal development and always doing that stuff. But I think all of us, there's still like that one thing that it's like, Ooh, I need to still get over this. I still need to work on that. It's like, I worked on all of these, but like this one, mm, I still need to do that. And the relationship component and self-worth component really was that for me. And so this is where CBT, my background in cognitive behavioral therapy really comes into play. So all of the work that I do with my clients, I finally had the opportunity to do it on myself because it was the first time I was living alone. First time I ever had my own place. First time I ever like, I basically got exposure therapy, like flooded in just like, there you go, figure it out. Yeah. So it was the first time that I ever had the opportunity to really sit down and look at what am I doing? What did I do? What are the thoughts I'm consistently having? What are the beliefs that I have? And how are those beliefs impacting my behavior? Mm -hmm. So the way that CBT looks at the world and like the way that we are in the world is that growing up from the experiences that we go through, the people that we're around, the experiences that we have, we start developing beliefs about ourselves, beliefs about the world and beliefs about the future. And it's in three different components. It's worth, lovability, and a sense of hope or hopelessness. Mm -hmm. So me growing up, I believed that the world was against me, the future was going to be terrible, and that I'm a terrible person, and that I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and it's hopeless. Why bother? Why try? Which is why, you know, I was self-harming and doing all of those things, right? Yeah. So- Because of that, because of my upbringing, because of the conditioning, because of the way I interpreted the situations around me, I started developing those beliefs. So when you develop beliefs like that, we unconsciously seek out environments and situations and people and experiences that validate it. Or if, or if we're in any experience, we just interpret it through that belief. Mm -hmm. So the example that I use is if you're someone who believes that people don't like you and you're at the mall and you walk by and you see your friend and you're like, Hey, and they say nothing back. They don't wave. They're just like completely blank faced. You're so, Oh my God, they don't like me. Exactly. I mean, I've been there so many times. You don't even know. I had to get through that. I mean, you kind of sound like me when I was younger. Like I thought nobody liked me. Yeah. Like, like, what is my value? Like, why am I even here? Like every, I feel like everyone's attacking me and against me. Like what's wrong with my personality? So it's like, I totally relate to that. And I, you know, I had thoughts of like, why am I even here? Like, what's the point of that? You know, I had to really work on myself when I was younger. You know, I went to therapy, I did mirror work. I, you know, I had to really learn to like love myself. And sometimes it's so hard. And I'm still dealing with that today. Like I'm still not done with my journey of, of love and self-love. Yeah. Yeah. Totally relate to what you're saying. Hey friends, I hope you are enjoying this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. This podcast would not be possible if it wasn't for the support of you, my wonderful community. To support your mama's podcast, please click the support link right down below and you can donate just as little as 99 cents. Also, follow me in the Shop Like to Know It app where you can follow me with all my exclusive content all the way from baby products I love, fashion and style and everything in between. Now let's get back to the episode. Yeah. It's, it's a never ending journey. I mean, I don't think you're ever going to be done. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing that people get really tripped up on when it comes to like mental health and personal development and, you know, just bettering ourselves in general. There's such a stigma around it where it's like, you only need to work on yourself if there's something wrong with you. And if I do work on myself, well, I need to get it done quickly. And then I need to never address it again. And it's like, no, 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 this is an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't just go to the gym once and you're fit for life. You don't eat a salad once and you're healthy for the rest of your life. And this is where this is going to have to be a daily thing 
you know, what are the thoughts that I am consistently having? How are they impacting me? Mm-hmm. How am I interpreting the situations that I'm going through? Am I noticing any patterns that keep happening over and over again? So like for me, feeling like everyone hated me and was against me, feeling like I was awkward and nobody wanted me around, feeling like no one would love me unless I overly gave of myself. Yeah. You know, it's like all of those patterns that just kept going over and over and over. And it, there comes a point where you have to look at yourself and say, why does this keep happening? Because if it keeps happening over and over and over again, I must be doing something. Mm-hmm. You know, there must be something that I'm doing to like perpetuate this. Well, it's, it, isn't it like our thoughts? And it's like, that's what it is. It's like our thoughts creating our reality. And so we're just like the hamster in the hamster wheel. And, you know, we're just doing the same thing over and over again. You know, it's like insanity. And you think you're going to have like a different goal, you know, it's like, it's like we talked about, it's a mental game. You have to change. It's not going to be happening any anymore. If you just change your thoughts and how you feel about yourself. And, you know, that kind of leads me to like, how can someone like really break those fears and limitations to be like their genuine self? Because Mm. I feel like sometimes that's hard. People mold into like, oh, I like this person. So I'm just going to like, kind of like chameleon myself to kind of like what they like or et cetera. You know what I'm talking about? Like, how can we really live like in our true genuine self? I think the first thing that you have to do is recognize, you know, who are the people that you're doing that around the most and why Mm -hmm. is it because there's a belief that other people are better than you. And so in order to be a good person, you have to be like those people. Is it that you have a blueprint in your mind of what a good person is supposed to be? And so you're just trying to, you know, act like the people you think look like that. Cause that's honestly what happens with a lot of people, you know, every single one of us, right. We all have different beliefs, different values and different aspirations. And the challenge is most of us didn't actively choose it Mm -hmm. because of our conditioning, because of our upbringing, because of what we experienced or who we were around, we started developing this belief system and these blueprints of what a meaningful life is supposed to look like, what a good person is supposed to look like, what I'm supposed to be, what you're supposed to be, what all of this stuff is supposed to be. And the reason why most people feel ingenuine to themselves is because they're acting on that blueprint that they didn't choose. Yeah. So for me, for example, I was a rowdy, wild child, right? My parents literally called me monkey. That was my nickname because I was crazy. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a family and in a community where girls were supposed to be quiet, reserved, sit there, don't talk, do all of this stuff. And so me being who I was, wasn't okay. It was actually punished. Mm -hmm. So when, so when I start acting on that, when I start trying to be what they want me to be, And when who I am is dismissed and shut down, I can't be genuine to myself because I've gone for years, not actually knowing what that is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what so many people struggle with. We dismiss ourselves for so long that we actually don't really know what our genuine self is. So the first thing that I would say is who are the people that you keep finding yourself emulate or that you keep trying to morph yourself into or like, We always have that one friend who it's like, oh my God, I wish I was like them. Mm -hmm. Well, what are the qualities that you're comparing yourself to with that person? What are you telling yourself you don't have that they do? And why do you actually value that? Mm -hmm. Is it just because you think they're better than you and that you're not good enough? Or is it they actually have qualities that I admire that I would like to learn how to do in my own way? Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So I would say first, try to recognize those patterns. The second thing that I would say is the biggest struggle that most people don't realize is they don't realize where their mind is taking them. Mm -hmm. So what I have all of my clients do is something called the thought record. There's, there's a statistic out there that says we have like 
90,000 thoughts or something like that a day, right? So well, especially like, women, I know we're definitely, I can be oh, yeah. you thinking about what am I going to eat after this? And like, <laughs> absolutely. All these things we're, we're very like, you know, we're, our brains are very multidimensional. <laughs> oh yeah. hundred percent. So we don't realize that we're having all of these thoughts all day long. We're paying attention to certain things. We're making meaning. We're having thoughts, ideas, images, perceptions, whatever about all of these things. And it's causing our emotions to change. So if I see that friend walking down and I wave and they don't wave back and my initial thought is, oh my God, they're mad at me. I did something. I'm probably going to feel sad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel scared. I'm going to feel anxious. I'm going to start ruminating even more of like, oh my God, what did I do? I need to make it up to them. I need to do this. I need to do that. So what I have my clients do is I have them start recognizing and start writing down. When am I noticing big shifts in how I feel? Mm -hmm. Because usually if there's a shift in how you feel, something just happened that you made a meaning out of, or that you had an interpretation or a thought about. Mm -hmm. and we and when we can start understanding the patterns in our emotions and in the thoughts that we're having we can actually then break down what are the beliefs that i'm having that are causing all of this yeah and then you can start going to work on those beliefs so if you don't feel like you're good enough let's test it what evidence do you have mm -hmm. oh well a b c d and e and then you start questioning it is that really true how do you know it's true? Oh, well, this person said it to me. Okay. Is that person the best judge of character? Would you, do you really trust their insight? Well, no. Oh, okay. So you just start testing the evidence a little bit. Mm -hmm. And for those things that we're genuinely not good at, like I genuinely used to not be good at speaking. So I practiced, I'm like, okay, I'm not good at this. How can I get better? So my mentor told me make a video every single day, just talking to the camera. Okay. So I did that for three years and now I'm completely fine doing it. Or I hated having my picture taken. So he and I would go do photo shoots together. Mm -hmm. And eventually I just got comfortable like being in front of like a legitimate camera. Yeah. So once you can start recognizing, you know, what are the thoughts I keep having? What are the interpretations that I'm having that are causing me to feel and act in certain ways? Then I can start to target them specifically. Okay, if I know every time I go around my mom, I start feeling sad or frustrated or that one friend that like you always get pissed off every time you're around you, you don't know why. Yeah. You can act, you can start paying attention to it. How do I feel when I'm around them? What are the thoughts that I'm having? What is it triggering inside of me? What's that blueprint that it's triggering? Mm -hmm. And then you can start going to work on those specific things. Totally. No, I think that's really great. I love like your perspective on, on all of this. Um, so I do have like four questions I ask all my guests and I would love to know what your answers are. So yeah. my first one I have for you is who and what inspires you? Tony Robbins is one of the biggest inspirations for me. He was actually the first person that I had ever listened to when it came to personal development. Um, so when I like first got into the personal development scene, my goal was I want to be the female Tony Robbins. Like that was a big goal of mine. And that's not the goal anymore, but he was the first ever like big inspiration of mine. And I would say now it's my business partner. She's genuinely unbelievable and just an extraordinary human being. Yeah, no, that's great. I love that answer. And it's good though that you and your business partner have like respect and get along and stuff. Cause I know sometimes that stuff can get a little, a little, little wonky. at times, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was just a little side note. Mm -hmm. Um, so my second question is what is something you wished you knew when you were younger? That it's okay to be who you are. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is, that is a good one too. If I can go back to my younger self and be like, it's okay to be who you are. Like, I think I would have maybe started this podcast earlier or whatever it is, like put myself out there more and gone after those desires that yeah. I've always wanted to do, but was like fearful of because of judgment or et cetera, et cetera. The list can go on. Yeah. 
Um, so my third question is, what's the essential part of your daily routine? I have a really, really structured morning routine that I know like if I don't do it, my entire day is going to be thrown off. And a big part of that is making sure that I go to the gym in the morning. So like I'm a very fit, like athletic person. Mm -hmm. um, and if I don't get that out in the morning, then like the entire day is done. <laughs> yeah, no, I notice such a difference. Like if I wake up in the morning and work out, my day is so much more lighter and yeah, I'm in a better mood. And then when I don't, I've totally noticed the difference. Like I can get through the day, but I'm just not as like energetic. It's, it's hard to explain. Yeah. Or like productive. Yeah, totally. Um, and then my last question is the best advice you've ever received. Best advice I've ever received that the people who really care about you are going to be the ones that are just always there supporting you no matter what. Mm -hmm. Totally. Through your downs and your ups and your high, you know, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So Bianca, do you have any last words before we say goodbye today? The biggest piece of advice that I would say, and it's, it's a little long winded, but have you ever heard the quote, everything happens for a reason? Yes. I hate that phrase. <laughs> and here's the thing. The reason I hate that phrase is because working as a clinician and just doing the type of work that I do, I've heard stories that'll bring you to your knees. Like I've heard stories that you, you couldn't even think of. They're just so horrific. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no reason why someone, a little girl wakes up in the middle of the night to her dad doing something to her or like just victims of abuse or victims of whatever, you know, we have horrible things that happen to us. And I don't believe that those happen for a reason, but I am a firm believer that in every single one of us, there is the power to choose what things mean and what we do about the things that happen to us. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so much more powerful because it gives the control of our life back to us. You know, the worst possible thing could happen to you, but you have the power, the control, and the ability to change the outcome of that and change what that means to you, about you, and about your future. Totally. Well, that's a great last piece of advice. And guys, I have all of Bianca's information down below in the show notes. So don't be shy. Go say hi. Reach out to her. She is a wealth of knowledge. And I'm pretty sure she can help you move forward into becoming your true authentic self. Drop the fear. Drop the limitations. And know your worth. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.